AMT Ertl's 1968 Shelby GT500 coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back to another Monster Hobbies old model kit review as we take a look at what's inside of the AMT Ertl Shelby GT500 model kit. Now many of you may be wondering why I'm doing these reviews of the old model kits. Well, it's simply because if you're out there in internet land and you happen to come across one of these and you want to know what's inside there before you put your money down on it, I get to be the go-to guy that's going to show you exactly what's in here. So that's why I do these old ones. Also, when AMT Round 2 pops out a new model kit and you're getting all hyped about it, you can also check out these older reviews to make sure that you know what to expect in the upcoming release well, of course, they're going to add in new decals, new box art, all kinds of things, but at least you get a bit of a navigation before you go out there to know exactly what the model kit is like. So without further ado, let's open up the lid on this great big Mustang and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1968, where we get to witness the 1968 Shelby GT500. And of course, Carol Shelby used to be a race car driver who retired in 1960 and ended up working with Ford and other automotive companies to make super performance machines, generally based around the Ford engines. So looking at this, we can tell, actually from the uh, box arts, from before, we can see that this issue of the Shelby had 14 releases from 1967 to 2018, 53 years in production from 2020. Anyway, looking at this great box, this is the 2002 edition, 2004 release of the 68 Shelby GT500, and this is, of course, AMT under RC2. And you can see there's simplistic box art going on here. Just, of course, pictures of this beautifully built model. This, of course, is in the stock configuration. So, as we look through this, let me know what the differences are between the 68 Shelby GT and a regular 1968 Ford Mustang. Here on the box again, we've got the photographs of the models as well as our skill level. So this is skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up with glue and paint. And of course our box is pretty much right there. So one of the most cool boxes I ever saw of course is the third one which was the 68 Shelby Drag Race Team. And what's cool about seeing those old boxes is you get to find out really where some of the parts and variations came in along the history of these models. So now let's just rip open the box lid here and see what's inside. Just on a basic, of course we have our 68 Shelby Mustang instructions and some decals. Then here's our body and the interior tub got pressed inside there. Lots of parts, sprues, of course, exhaust systems, hood and body panels, undercarriage with wheel backs. This one, I don't know if this is a Shelby thing or something I threw in there. I couldn't see that in the instructions when I was looking at this before the video. We've got our tires in a little bag here. And chrome. We have the windshield, more chrome, I love chrome, so shiny, <laughs> and then that's our box. So I'll clear all this out of the way and then we will get into our review of the instructions. Here's our instruction sheet for our 1969 Shelby Mustang, and as you can see we have three cars we can actually build out of this one kit. The first one, of course, is the Shelby Mustang, as it would have come out of Carroll Shelby's shop. 
Then we have the drag racing edition, as well as the custom one with these American five-star type wheels. The nice thing about this is it gives you a full rundown of the Carroll Shelby 68 Mustang right here in this write-up, as well as has all these great bits and pieces about how to build up your model. Next up we have the stock engine assembly, and this of course would be the straight-up Shelby Mustang for 68 with the great 428 cubic inch motor, and here it's a single air cleaner, single carburetor, and single intake manifold for the carburetor with uh, your oil filler caps, your cylinder heads, left and right hand manifolds, front engine cover, and all the rest. And then here we have the stock interior, which of course is very similar to a stock Mustang interior for 68. Not too many changes, just a couple of uh, instrument panel features. But you do get a instrument panel, a steering wheel, gear shift, two bucket seats that fit into a bucket seat with console attachment, as well as the armrest comes in separate, and your fold down rear seat with the rear seat back. Coming in mid-year for our engine assembly, the custom version, which is actually a bigger stock engine, we again have a 428, and this time this is the KR version, which stood for King of the Road, came in a bit later. Still the 428 as of before, except this time you have your dual Holly carburetor set up, the dual manifold, and the custom air cleaner. And this, of course, is the Cobra Jet 428 from the Torino. Then, in our interior for the custom, there is some changes. So, basically, you could use this custom engine as an upgraded stock um, Shelby KR. Whereas with this interior, this is all starting to become a race custom interior. Your instrument panel comes again, and then there's an auxiliary instrument panel. These bucket seats here, and this type of roll bar, which is a basic uh, curve style. Then there's a fall-down panel here to cover over the um, sweet seat cushion, as well as a back panel here just to cover it up. And here we have the drag engine, and this, of course, is our single overhead cam 429 big block. This thing first came in with the 1969 Shelby Drag Team AMT kit T501-500. Now this thing is crazy because you get, uh, of course, chrome cylinder heads, the chrome uh, cylinder head cam cover, being a single overhead, you also get dual carburetors, the drag velocity stacks, the dual intake manifold, as well as these great big noodle type exhausts going into these exhaust hitter tips, and then the extra capacity oil pan, as well as the giant front cover, and of your single overhead cam belt and pulley assembly, and this great fan. Finally, we have our drag racing interior assembly. It's very much like the custom one. The only change in it is this full-out three-piece roll bar. This one has, of course, the sides and the back with the two little bars coming down here, which will glue into the back of your package shelf. Now, being that this kit originally came out in 1967 and then got upgraded to a 68, you, of course, have your one-stamp interior pan here, which is very typical of that time period. Here we have our stock chassis assembly. And the chassis is one flat pan, and everything gets glued on top of it. You have separate molded kingpins, tie rod, lower front suspension, the drive shaft, the rear differential in two pieces, two-piece exhaust with, actually it's four-piece exhaust, with uh, exhaust tips, so six in total. And then your assembled wheels will glue onto all these bits. There is a metal axle that goes through into the rear axle, whereas the front are glued onto the kingpins. The tire assembly here for the stock has the front outer rim, which are Carroll Shelby ones, and then the rubber tire, and then you have a rear inner rim, which will pop on, and a front inner rim. So you'll get two of each, one for front and one for rear. In the custom and drag racing versions, you get two different types of wheels. You get the outer rim, which would be the American Mags, the same rubber tire, and then the rear inners and front inner rims, so you'd have two and two. 
Or if you're going into your drag racing, you have the outer rim, the tire, and the front inner rims. Then you're getting these drag slicks in here and different inner rims for the rear. So you're going to have uh, regular street tires in the front and then big drag slicks in the back. Now for your custom and drag racing chassis, again it's the same molded pan. This time you're getting some shackles in here to raise up the rear axle so that you can fit in those drag slicks. Or you can leave them out and just use the regular street tires here with your metal axle going through for a uh, custom ride height. You can get your drive shaft. Now here, there's two things going on. So you've got your drag hitters that'll pop in and glue into your single overhead cam racing engine. Or you can have these straight exhausts with no mufflers onto your Cobra jet engine. So those are your options here. Or you could even put the Cobra jet engine into the stock chassis, which was over there, previous uh, little bit, and then hook it up that way. So you'd have your Cobra jet with the stock Shelby muffler package on there. So that's your drag racing type chassis. Next up is the universal body assembly for stock custom and drag. And I love this little Cobra on here with Shelby on it. That's pretty cool. I just move the instructions up just a touch. So it's got the body here and it says you can remove this little bit inside to put in those drag slicks. You have a ceiling console that will glue up inside there, the firewall, battery and ra radiator wall, as well as the windows. And again, because this is a 1969 or 67 initial release, it's got the front and rear window connected with these clear bridges in between here. You can cut them off for more um, authentic look. Anyway, there's our assembled interior and it all pops up into the body. Next up, we have our final assembly for the stock version. Okay, so this is where we start to see the difference between a regular Mustang and what Shelby did. Shelby put in the Mercury Cougar style intermittent rear tail lamps into a special fiberglass back end, which, of course, in the plastic here, you paint these. This is all chrome. So you paint those red with, uh, like to me, a clear red or something. And then you can glue it up inside the body. You put on your rear pan and then your rear bumper. There's also these little side scoops, which are here, and a brake scoop going down there. Those are also Shelby features that weren't on your standard Mustang. Shelby also included a fiberglass hood and fiberglass front end with a special bumper and grill. And there's our front pan going on. The headlights are chrome. You just pop them in, scrape off the back so you can glue and scrape in here after you paint so you can get that plastic to, to plastic uh, attachment. Then we have these special custom racing mirrors as well and it all pops down onto that assembled chassis pan. And here on our instruction sheet is the final assembly for custom and drag. Again you put on your fiberglass hood but this time you cut open the square that's molded underneath the hood to clear that drag racing engine. That's for the drag racing version. You cut the hole in. The side mirrors and the scoops and everything are all still standard. There is the extra oil cooler going in here. And then a special drag fuel tank going into the front. Then there's also turn signals that pop in here, which is interesting. They're not in the stock version. Maybe those are for the custom. Anyway, all this goes together and then you get your Mustang going that way. Again, the option of drag slicks or stock tires with the little cutaway section there. And then I'll just pull this over so you can see the back end. There is a chrome gas cap that pops onto there. Quick fill gas fuel fill uh, cap. And then again, the mercury taillight housing goes into there. And your rear pan and rear bumper. The final step is, of course, a decal application. And we have the special GT500 decal that goes across the bottom for your stock version. And then over here, you're driving across, you get the drag race version and they show you to use this, this uh, kind of stripe here, as well as the different decals that are the sponsors. And that brings us to the conclusion of our 1968 Shelby Mustang instruction sheet. And now let's take a look at the actual plastic components. 
Fresh out of the box is our 1968 Shelby GT500 body. And as you can see, there is a giant section right in the hood that you need to remove using your hobby saw or side cutters and sandpaper. Very nicely done, though, for the era. You got your little vents there, your windshield wipers. Shelby is right across the front here in raised letters. And it's got the correct shape to the body overall and of course your trunk lid. Moving up there you can see Shelby marked in clearly across the deck. Very cool. Got your side marker lights in there, your scoops with the little weird things on there actually for the uh, locations for your side scoops to glue on. So that'll all be covered. Nice uh, representation of that fiberglass nose from Carol Shelby. Of course your Cobra uh, um, snake on here as well kind of can't see too well but anyway flipping it over there are some big mold buttons underneath here and inside the roof there is of course the little marked out area for that overhead console that's going on so you're going to need your number 16 hobby blade to get rid of those mold marks in the roof along the side there is a bit of uh, oops <laughs> there we go a little bit of mold um, stuff going on in there which you could use a half round hobby file to get out more mold marks up under here which you should get rid of just so it doesn't interfere with the chassis alignment overall though considering the vintage it's not that bad a couple little bits of flash and other hard pieces that could be uh, removed using your hobby blades and sandpaper Next up we have the chassis pan as well as some extra details out here. So I'm just going to zoom the camera back a little. There we go. Now you can see everything that's on this parts tree. So like I was saying, there's the chassis pan, all one piece, which is very typical of a kit made in the 60s, which this one is. You have the front brakes, and these ones have disc brake calipers in here, which is another Shelby feature. There's the little scoops that go on, the rear rolled pan, and our firewall. And even for the vintage of this kit, you can tell there's some good detail going on there. All the little things that are supposed to be there are there, including the tiny brake system they used. And then turning this over, there are some mold marks and whatnot. There's some really uh, thick pins here. Now, these may actually need to stay in so I wouldn't try to scrape those off we're gonna to have to check that out when we actually fit the chassis into the body last thing you want to do is cut these off and then push it up in there and this goes right up in and all of a sudden your engine is sticking up through the hood in the wrong way because there's nothing you can do about it but these ones back here of course you can remove you have my permission and there's some here too and that might actually affect the interior sitting in there so anyway, pretty cool stuff going on. Let's take a look at some more. And here's three parts trees all together, just for a quicker review. We've got our Ford steering wheel, which looks accurate for this type of Mustang. There's the special fiberglass Carroll Shelby hood with the intakes, as well as the little scoops on here, and our hood pins. Then we've got the little bars for the exhaust. They're not bars. <laughs> There's our radiator wall, and radiator the rear pan the front pan and that's that part tree then we have our regular stock seats and then these wider racing buckets for your drag and custom versions then there's these exhaust pipes and they're dual so these would be again for that greater 427 single overhead cam i made a mistake i thought it was a 429 but it in fact has 427 stamped in the cylinder heads i took a look at it or the valve covers, or whatever they are. <laughs> anyway, there's our back seat. That's the seat front. There's the seat back. Then we've got that folded down panel, the center console, the Mustang dashboard, as well as the exhaust hitters for these, or the end caps. There's the mufflers and our center console, the overhead console. So I'll bring up a select few parts here just to check out. I guess first off, take a look at this hood. So you can see the nice detail and the big snorkels in there. Turning it over, 
We have four mold marks under here which will need to be scraped off. And there's a bit of sort of mold junk going on. There's that rectangle. You cut this through for your uh, special drag racing motor. Steering wheel looks good. A bit of flash around there. There are mold marks on this side of the radiator wall. So again, you have to get rid of those. That's for your battery and your radiator hose. So this is the side you're going to see inside the car. So it's important to get rid of those. There's the back panel. Again, mold marks are high on this one. So you want to get rid of those so it fits better in the body. <laughs> they couldn't resist putting one here, so they did. That, of course, is your Shelby pan. There is a little bit of a divot in there. So you could fill that or cross sand it till it disappears. Anyway, uh, I won't bring up the seats and the exhaust noodles. But there's our dashboard, and this does look very prototypical to the Shelby Mustang. Actually, to all Mustangs, because it was a universal dashboard. I had a friend back in the 90s who had one of these Mustangs, and this pretty much is his dashboard. So again, you can see all the nice detail. I do believe AMT got it right for the vintage, of course, being that this kit originally came out in 67. So, without further ado, let's take a look at some of our other grey plastic bits. Here's our last gray plastic components. So we have three parts trees here and we've also got our interior. There's a bit of flash on my exhaust pipes here. There's our differential. We've got a sway bar. We've got our front suspension. We also have a drive shaft, king pins, and there's the elevation blocks for the rear springs for your drag steer with those big slicks. Here's our basic engine, um, 427 all the way. <laughs> There's our um, pulleys for the different types of motors. That's the standard 427 engine cover. There's uh, our cylinder heads as well as the regular oil pan, the single barrel manifold, and then our battery fan exhaust headers, the stock style. Uh, and then there's the seat backs with the console for the interior. And then our front brakes. And then the spare tire cover. Actually, our rear brakes. Sorry. And then our interior sitting here. So, let's just move some of this out of the way. Let's not bother with that. Let's take a look at the interior tub and the engine. So, there's all that nice detail going on with our block got the frost plugs in there, standard transmission, a nice detail on the battery, looks like a real Ford one, little hole here for mounting underneath, you got a, a radiator hose going on there, and then turning over to the back, they got all the mold marks underneath on the seat here, you will have to get rid of these because that of course is going to be sitting right on the transmission hump, and these you want it to sit down nice and flat in your interior, Actually, a lot of mold marks underneath here. That They're all going to have to be dealt with in order for this to sit nice and flush. But again, the front side looks fantastic. And then let's look at our interior tub here. There she is. Unfortunately, the mold marks are right on top of that. So you're going to be having to use a lot of skill with your number 16 hobby blade to get in. Look at all the... Uh, Seats go right on the floor. This, of course, was not intended to carry around four people too well. Again, being a molded body pan, you got marginal interior. Um, and then you got more of those holes in the corners, the mold marks, I should say. But it does have the accurate standard style pedals molded in here, unlike some of them where they were purposely built to be a standard car and then they have automatic <laughs> floor pedals inside there but overall all that it is considering this came out in 67 this is actually pretty decent for the era maybe even cutting edge all right we get not one but two complete chrome trees and now i'm in chrome heaven and right here you can see our american mag wheels sticking out there nice and friendly for us and then we have this nice shelby unique shelby grill and the mercury cougar rear tail lights that are intermittent that were specially put in this car there's the carol shelby style mag wheels the air cleaner for the regular 427 version 
those awesome instrument panels. Then here's the bigger single overhead cam uh, cylinder heads, our Cobra Jet intake manifold, and the valve covers for the Cobra Jet. Then we've got our rear bumper, the headlights, and a whole bunch of different racing features and whatnot. And that three or yeah, three piece chrome roll bar. And then on this side we've got all the big engine components for a single overhead cam 427, which you can just read right there on the valve covers if you really stick your eyeball into it. There's the val uh, yeah, the cylinder or valve covers, pardon me for the regular 427 as well as the alternator. There's the big single overhead cam uh, front engine cover with the cam covers there and our intake manifold and the extra big oil filter or oil pan, pardon me. Hey, I'm filming this at like 1 a.m. All right, so anyway, it was that kind of day today. I could get nothing done. I could get nothing painted and I'm trying to paint something. And, of course, all my paint jammed up as soon as I pushed the trigger down. Gotta love those days. Anyway, look at the detail in here. This is very nice. This actually, considering the vintage, that this, this was a 1969 with that extra motor. This looks like one of the modern AMT kits from the 90s with all the rockers in there. So, again, you could have that exposed. Take a look at our grill. Very nice. It'll you got to go down there to get in your uh, black wash, but it'll come out nice. American mags again. These are all the same height across the back, so you can... Uh, the drag slicks... backs of the drag slick wheels will be a bit different. The Cobra Jet air intake. Very nice. Any mold marks across the back? Well, a few, but again, you can take them down. Take them down, paint them silver underneath, and then looking at our our big manifolds here. Yeah, I know you won't be able to see that too well on my camera, but it does say 427 in there. But look at all that. That's just beautiful work. I wish they gave you two engine blocks in this thing, or somebody would just glue the two together and resin cast it. Because, man, this engine would be good just standalone. So there's our chrome, and now let's take a look at the other bits. So I thought I would review the windshield, the chrome metal axle, and the tire combinations all as a one thing. So this is a typical 1960s style window arrangement. You got your rear glass here bridged over to the front windshield and a little crack in there of course. That's just the way they are. Then here we have our Goodyear Polyglass GT L6015s and the classic um, Goodyear Blue Streak drag racing slicks. So basically you could take this windshield and cut it off there and there, there and there to get these separate, but be careful because of course your front glass is fragile, so you want to use a saw and work very slowly to get that off. The tires are nice, they have of course a good tread pattern in them. These ones have been out with AMT kits since the beginning of time, basically. And uh, they're easy to clean up. You can paint white letters across Goodyear, make them look really nice. They are pretty cool. And then the drag slicks have also been in a lot of kits going all the way back to like 1962. These ones, of course, again, you can paint the Goodyear on there. And there's a lot of chunk on them, so you can actually put them in your spinning tool in your drill, which I use a special socket, and then just turn it on, file as smooth, and you get a nice tire out of it. Um, gets rid of the high points and all the rest. So overall, regular good old AMT classic. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet for our 68 Shelby GT500. And there's some very nice white stripes here that you could put on a dark colored car like your black, blue, and dark green. And you also have these red stripes which you could put on a white car or yellow car. <laughs> There's sponsorships for your drag racer. It's a good year. We have Craigar, Hayes, her shifter, and a bunch of others. As well as these yellow and orange stripes for your drag racer. 
And then we have two license plates, Michigan SHO-090, and then the little bumper sticker that says, I love model cars. So you can use these on your Mustang and save them for other projects as well. Here we have our 1968 Shelby GT500. I built this model kit a long time ago when I was just a little guy. <laughs> well, maybe not that little. But I wanted to build this as the Test Drive 2 car, which was featured in that old video game, actually computer game. There, of course, are the uh, Mercury rear tail lights. You can see it does go together quite nicely. My model was supposed to have blue stripes, but I never got around to finding any. And of course, there's those nice American wheels on there. Very well detailed, very nice kit to put together. And you too, of course, can have one of these for your own collection out there. And that completes our look at the 1968 Carroll Shelby GT500 from AMT Ertl. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great old box kit of the Shelby GT500. And if you want to see the new model kits that Monster Hobbies has in stock, why are you not checking out our great website, www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'm going to leave the link right down there in the description. All you got to do is click on it with your little pointer and it'll take you exactly to our great website, possibly even the model car section. So why not do that? And while you're at it, if you love these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe and share them with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I open up one of my old model kits out of my own collection, you're the first one to see exactly what's in the box. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.